Hey everyone, welcome to day 11. I'm super excited. Uh, I may be a little bit lower energy today because I went on a bike ride with my brother yesterday. First one I've done in like a year. And he's always been like kind of the, the fitter, handsomer, uh, activer, activer, more active brother. And um, and so he just just totally laid me out yesterday. Um, so yeah, so I'm feeling a little, little low energy today, but um, we're going to make it through. So today is uh, day 11, not one tilde, um, day le- or whatever that back tick. Today's day 11. And what I want to do today, I've been teasing it long enough that we're going to build a an actual Pokemon detail component. Now, uh, it's not going to be super exciting. What I want to show you is how to um, set up a resource that actually takes an ID. That's our goal today is set up a, a resource for an ID based endpoint. So we're going to do that um, right now. What we're looking at is that we have we have our list rendered. So first a bit of follow up. Ah, yes, yes. Follow up from yesterday. I had said a couple things that I um, that were inaccurate and they were just I just they slipped my mind. I just totally forgot. And when I was watching the video back, I was like, that that's not right. Dum dum. So uh, first of all, um, f- so from yesterday, I had said that the only way to consume uh, context in um, in a, a class component was with the render props API. That is not correct, actually. Um, you can also consume context in a class with um, this static context type. Um, that works, and it's probably you know a better way. But it's limited to one. You can only set um, you can only set one context type for a class component. At least that's my understanding of it. So the render props API really is the only way to consume multiple contexts in a single component. So. Just a, a, a clarification from yesterday, which I, I got that point wrong. Um, the other thing is that, um, uh, let's see. I th- there was something that I had said, um, and this might, might not be the best article for it, but um, I, had, I had said yesterday when I was building out this component, Yesterday, this component had the U, it was returning the unordered list, and then it was doing this map inside of it. And I had, I had mentioned a couple times, like, now these things are kind of, like, coupled. Now, that is, is going to be the case for um, kind of what we're working on today, at least as far as I understand. But for lists, you, when you are using this strategy to do the render prop thing, um, you really can um, get away with not having any of the JSX markup or components in in here. The reason being is that React components um, as of 16.2 or 3 um, allow you to return arrays. So we can, this is a component, but we can just return an array of elements and um, wrap it in a UL here. The benefit of that is that maybe we have a, um, you know, maybe we have some kind of structure that we don't actually want this in a list. Right, we want it in divs or spans or like whatever. I, I'm just posing a hypothetical. Um, if that's the case, um, if the UL was baked into the component, then we'd have to add some additional API to say, well, render this component as this type. Now, if we want it all to be um, divs without changing that component at all, um, we can just change all of these to div. You see all those dots go away, and um, and our list is presented as divs now. Um, so that is um, a huge advantage um, to to doing it that way, um, and something that I had honestly just forgot. Um, but the the point being that components can return arrays, which is amazing for this type of list um, where it's now completely dynamic. There's really no opinion about what that final markup is going to be, which is awesome. Okay, now back into what we were talking about. So, right now we have the ID of the Pokemon that's selected, um, which is great. That's all we need to make the request, cache that resource, and render a Pokemon. So let's let's start that work. Um, I am going to uh, just delete that 
Um, hopefully it's it's saved in my little like clipboard. Who knows? Um, we will make do without. And we're going to, in its place, define a Pokemon detail component. Now, I know that in order to have a detail, like I'm gonna need the ID of the Pokemon that I wanna show. So before I do anything, I'm just gonna add this little piece of API. Um, now, I can't really, I can't really do ID. I mean, I guess I could, but it means that I can't ever apply an ID to this element. So um, thinking ahead, I'll probably do Pokemon ID. It's, it's better to be at like, I, I think it's better to be like too overt and kind of scale it back than to try to figure out how to fix this later. So we are going to use the, let's see, what did we call it? Um, in state, that's referred to as selected Pokemon ID. So that's what we want to pass down as an ID. Now, I like starting from the implementation side because you get to get the errors and that's going to drive out um, kind of our next job. If you try to build it from the component side, it can be, you have to hold a lot more in your head. Right now, I have the component API that I want and the error is gonna tell me what my next step is. So Pokemon detail is not defined. Uh, let's define that. Pokemon detail, I hope I spelled that right. Um, and we know that we're going to take an ID off of props. So that'll be, um, we'll just pull that off right now. And uh, yes, it's, it's it stored. Um, and the ID is going to be ID now, which we're getting from props. So it doesn't look like we are getting it from props. So what happened? Oh, right. Now, I'd like to refer to this as the ID inside of my Pokemon component. So I can just remap this. So Pokemon um, ID as ID. Now um, I can refer to it as ID. This is really just a preference thing. I could just take Pokemon ID and use Pokemon ID. Um, it's up to you. <laughs> uh, but that's um, that's kind of a nice uh, a nice thing that you can do is just kind of rename these, um, you know, from what's passed in to what you want to use it as. Okay, so what is next? So now we have the ID. Um, what we need to do is we need to um, now read from the resource. So I'm actually gonna change this to um, an article. I think that's probably a more appropriate markup for what this will eventually become. Uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I always love learning new things. Now we're going to start with, we need a Pokemon resource. <coughs> And we're going to give that an ID um, and we're going to call read on it. And I know that the name is in there. So I'm going to call call name on that, that, that eventual object that we get back. So uh, great. We have a new error. Pokemon resources not defined. Um, let's go find our other resource. It's going to be really similar to that. Um, and uh, this is going to look like, okay, so we're going to take ID as an argument and then we're going to interpolate that out at the end of the URL. So this is now dynamic. Um, we have to change something because in the previous one, I was just using double quote strings. We need to use these, um, these template literal strings and you can see via the highlighting that what that does is, um, it this dollar sign curly braces um, allows us to say this this value is going to be dynamic. It's going to be what we get from this this function argument. Um, I think that's it. So we have duplicate uh, declaration of oh, I need to change this. We're going to take the collection out because this is not a collection. Um, Pokemon resource is not a function. Oh, <laughs> I've. Sorry, I totally did this wrong. Um, the ID needs to go in the read, obviously, because we're reading this ID. Um, Pokemon resource is not a function, so sorry. That's why it's nice to have these, uh, these, these errors because Pokemon resource literally is not a function. So that's great. So we have that now, and now we are fetching the name, which is great. So if I click on this, um, we can now, we see that now that name updates. That wasn't too painful, hopefully. 
Um, now, let's go to the, uh, I have this opened up, but if we visit that URL, we can see that we have a huge amount of data um, that we can now uh, use in our Pokemon components. So that's awesome. Um, that's, um, that's great, but it's kind of hard to parse. So um, I wanted to show you um, every, I mean, like uh, Firefox and Chrome both have these um, inspectors that you can use to kind of get a, a, a better handle on huge JSON responses. Um, one, I just Googled this, and this one seems pretty nice. Um, I, you can see that there are obviously a bunch of them, so find the one that works for you. Um, but this one's called Restlet Client, and you can just add this to Chrome. So um, now I have this little bar, so if I tap that, uh, actually let me close this, if I tap that, it'll open up a new client, a REST API Explorer, um, which is great. Now um, I can take the uh, URL that I'm interested in. Uh, looks like I already had it cached there, my bad. Um, and hit send, and what it will do is it gives me kind of all of the details about that request. Now, the nice thing is, is that I can collapse all of these, which is great because as you saw in the other response, it was just pages and pages of these like deeply nested objects. Um, and here I can see, oh, okay, I have, um, I have height at the, the root element. I have the experience of the root element, um, ID, like all of these kind of things. But then if I want to explore and see what movies this character was in, uh, I can go in and do that. Um, so what my encouragement to you is today is use this REST Explorer, um, take this new component that we uh, have created, the Pokemon detail, all of the data at this endpoint is available to you. So, um, you know, use this resource and um, just kind of have fun with it. Now, it's going to be really cumbersome for you if you have to type this a bunch of times. So you don't have to. Um, we can pull this out and... Say let Pokemon equal Pokemon resource dot read. We'll just read it at the top of that component. Uh, and then we can refer to it everywhere as just um, Pokemon. Cool. So this will be insanely valuable to you uh, as you start adding features. You don't want to have to read from the resource every time. Just do it once and uh, and 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 hold all of those hold that value um, in in more easily accessible variable. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Good luck. Make the best um, little Pokemon of you that you can imagine and uh, send it to me. Uh, I'd love to see what you come up with. So uh, good luck. I'll see you tomorrow.